hey beautiful people of the most high god so the most high wanted me to talk to you and teach you and to reprove something that he is against which is debate and we're going to go through the scriptures these about debate and that god never called us to debate but to reason the most high called us to reason together not to debate reasoning is from god debate is from satan so these things he doesn't like hebrew israelite christian debate hebrew israelite versus christian debate who won because they're missing something when you debate it's why those who are enlightened reason and articulate problem solving with good reasoning they give solution this those who debate, argue, and just want to prove their point to be right, not fact, just right in their own conceits, pride. That's why it says here, Hebrew is a light versus Christian debate, who won? It's about who won. It's not about God. Debate is Muslim in the Bible. Like, this is not of God. This is of Satan. And he wants you to know he's not using any of these people who do debate. And we're going to prove this in the scriptures. So um, debate is from Satan and you're not supposed to do it. But reasoning is from God. When you have re good reasoning, you will know how to articulate yourself and produce your cause with understanding. You'll give solution to problems. All right. People who don't have solution to problems and just want to be right debate. Nobody's learning from that. It's my point against your point. It's who's right and who's and who's wrong. There's no healing and it's not edifying the church and healing anyone to get them to Christ. It's trying to prove a point. God is not with debate. He's all about bring forth your good reasoning. And we're going to talk about reasoning. Now, produce Isaiah 41 and 21. Produce your cause, says the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasonings. Your, re your strong reasons, says the king of Jacob. So God tells you to bring forth your strong reason. All right, produce your cause. All right, now we're going to talk about the scriptures where you're not supposed to debate. Romans 28, 1 and 28 to 1 and 31. All right, per and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a retrobate, retrobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Debate is not convenient. So what are the things that are not convenient? And how do you have a retrobate mind? By debating. I'm going to prove this to you. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Debate is unrighteous. You're not edifying anybody. You're trying to prove a point. It's prideful. Fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit. So what? And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, so when you don't like to retain God in your knowledge, God gives you over to a retrobate mind and you'll do these things. You'll be filled with unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. So we understand that debate is not of God, that's of Satan. Isaiah 58 and 4. Behold, you fast for strife and debate. So God's telling you, see, like these people, they fast for strife and debate, all right? They're not fasting to heal the body of Christ. They're not fasting to help. Behold, you fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Aren't they trying to make their voice on high? Hebrew Israelites were Christians debate. Who won? They're trying to make their voice on high. 2 Corinthians 12 and 20. For I fear, lest when I come, I shall f not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you such as you would not, lest there be debates. What? Debates, envyings, wraths, stripes, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, tumults, 
So debate is not from God. God is about bringing forth your strength and reasoning so you can enlighten one another and you could learn from one another. Now, Ecclesiastes 7 and 25, I applied my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things. So this is what you're supposed to, when you have good reasoning, it's because you have, you seeked out wisdom and you searched to know. You have knowledge to know, knowledge is to know. You searched, you seeked, you found, and you seeked out wisdom. You have understanding of the things that you know. And the reason of things and to know wicked wickedness of folly, even foolishness and madness. So when you have, there's good reasoning and there's evil reasoning. But reasoning is to show you the difference between good and evil. That is what reasoning is about. Forgive me, I meant to say reasoning shows you what is good and what is evil. That's why God says bring forth your strong reasoning. Now, Doctrine and Covenants 45 and 10 and 11 till 11. Wherefore come ye unto it with him that I come, come it, I will reason as with men in days of old, and I will show unto you my strong reasonings. So God says he will reason with you and he'll show you his strong reasoning. He'll let you know the, the difference between the good and evil of what you're saying and what you're doing. He'll give you the reasoning. Wherefore, hearken you together and let me show unto you even my wisdom. You understand? I apply my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things. God lets you understand the reason of things, why things happen. Wherefore, hearken you together and let me show unto you even my wisdom. God said, let him show you his wisdom, the wisdom of him whom you say is the God of Enoch and his brethren. Now, Job 13 and 3, surely I would speak to the Almighty and I desire to reason with God. But we're going to get how we're supposed to reason with each other, not debate. So you got a desire to reason with God so you can have wisdom. Doctrine and Covenant 61 and 13. And now behold, I for your good. I gave unto you a commandment concerning these things, and I, the Lord, will reason with you as with men in the days of old. Now, Job 37 and 19, teach us what we shall say unto him, for we cannot order our speech by reason of darkness. Why do not people have good reasoning and they can't reason well to know the difference between good and evil and to show you the understanding of wisdom? Because they don't seek God. And there is what Satan did. Cannot order our speech by reason of darkness because of the kingdom of darkness. Because of those who are of darkness. Because of the works of darkness. And they're doing the works of darkness debate. That's why they cannot order their speech aright. Now Proverbs 26 and 16. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. Good reasoning and bad reasoning. Isaiah 1 and 18. Come now and let us reason together. What does God tell us to do together? Reason together, not debate. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. 1 Peter 3 and 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that axes you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. How can you have a good conversation in Christ when you have good reasoning, you have a good conscience? That's why it says in Job here. Teach us that we shall say unto him, for we cannot order our speech by the reason of darkness. That's why you have to have the reasoning of Christ. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse of your good conversation in Christ. You have a good conversation when you have good reasoning. Now, Job 15 and 3. Should he reason with unprofitable talk? This is unprofitable talk. This is unprofitable talk, debate, debate. This is like for entertainment. That's not saving souls. 
Should he reason with unprofitable talk or with speeches wherewith he can do no good? This does no good, people of God. That does no good. Hebrews 5 and 14. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So reasoning. When you're seasoned with God, when you walk with God, when you're in age, because you know you come as a babe and then you grow up, right? So you're going to be full of age. When you're a babe, you drink milk. When you're grown, you eat meat. So that is the difference. Understand that parable. Understand that precept as well. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So... That you have to know that reasoning is to discern both good and evil. Job 9 and 14. How much less shall I answer him and choose out my words to reason with him? Because good reasoning is have you exercise your senses to discern both good and evil. That's good reasoning. That's why God says bring forth your reasoning. Do you have good? Have, have you exercised your senses to discern what's both good and what is evil? Because in this day and age, they're calling evil good and good evil. Debate is evil. Debate is from Satan. Reasonings from God. Doctrine and covenants, 50 and 10 to 30. And now come, says the Lord by the Spirit, unto the elders of his church. And let us reason together. So this tells you again, let's reason together. It tells you also in Isaiah, let's reason together. All right? That you may understand, let us reason even as a man reasons one with another face to face. Not debate with each other, but reason with each other, even face to face. Now when a man reasons, he is understood of man. When he reasons, he's understood of man. When you debate, you're not... You're, you're, you're not, a man does not understand you because you guys are trying to prove who's right and who's wrong. It's prideful and there's no edification. It's unprofitable talk because he reasons as a man. Even so will I, the Lord reason with you that you may understand. Why does God reason with his creation for you to understand? Because reasoning is to show you there is unprofitable talk he reasons with unprofitable talk or with speeches wherewith he can do no good um reasoning is what by reason of use they they have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil so you need god to have good reasoning and the wisdom so let's go back up a little bit to have wisdom Doctrine and Covenants 45 and 10 to 11. Wherefore, come ye unto it, and with him that comes, I will reason as with men in the days of old, and I will show unto him my strong reasoning. Wherefore, hearken ye together, and let me show unto you even my wisdom, the wisdom of him who you say is the God of Enoch and his brethren. Surely I will speak to the Almighty, and I will desire to reason with him. Let's get back down to the others. Get back to Doctrine and Covenants chapter 50. Now, when a man reasons, he is understood of man because he reasons as a man. Even so will I. God will reason with you. The Lord reason with you that you may understand. Wherefore, I, the Lord, ask you this question. Unto what were you ordained? Whoa, that's a good question. What were you ordained, people of God? Because up till now, there's a lot of people who don't know what they were ordained by God to do. They're not walking in their purpose. To preach my gospel by the Spirit, even the Comforter, the Comforter is the Holy Spirit, which was sent forth to teach the truth. And then received you spirits which ye could not understand, and received them to be of God. And in this are you justified? So God said you receive spirits, and you don't even understand the spirits that you received, but they're not of God. Are you justified in this thing? He asked you a question. He asked you two questions. What are you ordained for and what spirit are you listening to? Behold, you shall answer this question yourselves. 
Nevertheless, I will be merciful unto you. He that is weak among you hereafter shall be made strong. Yeah, God gives strength unto the weak and he gives power unto them too. Verily I say unto you, he that is ordained of me and sent forth to preach the word of truth by the comforter. So he who is sent forth to preach the truth by the comforter, the Holy Spirit, in the spirit of truth, does he preach it by the spirit of truth or some other way? God asked you a question. Are the people who speak in the truth to you and have the real Holy Spirit, are they speaking the truth to you in some other way? Isn't the truth plain? Truth is plain and simple. And if it be by some other way, it is not of God. So if it's of some other way, debate it's not of God. Therefore, why is it that you cannot understand and know? That he that receives the word by the spirit of truth receives it as it is. Preach by the spirit of truth. Wherefore, he that preaches and he that receiveth understands one another. And both are edified and rejoice together. And that which does not edify is not of God. So anything that doesn't edify you, anything that doesn't teach you, is not of God. Debating doesn't teach you. It's proven who's right and wrong. That's not of God, people of God. This is what God wants to teach you. And he's using me as his vessel to teach you this. Now, and that which does not edify is not of God. And it's darkness. So that's why it says you can't re um, order your speech because of darkness. That which is of God is light. Light shines the light on darkness, shines out the darkness, shows you the lie. Now, that which is of light of God is light, and he that receives its light and continues in God receives more light. So when you have light and you continue in light, you receive more light. That's why you get brighter. That's why it says the wise shall be bright. Brighter like the stars, it says, right? receives more light and that light grow it's brighter and brighter until the perfect day so your light doesn't get dimmer it gets brighter and brighter if you continue in walking in light with god and again verily i say unto you and i say it that you may know the truth that you may chase darkness away from you he that is ordained of god and sent forth the same is appointed to be the greatest notwithstanding he that is least and the servant of all. Wherefore, he is possessor of all things. For all things are subject unto him, both in heaven and on the earth. The life and the light, the spirit of the power, sent forth by the will of the Father through Christ, his Son. Remember how God said King David was blessed in the heavens and earth and Mount Zion? Look what it tells you. Both in that this bless, he was possessor of all things in the heavens and earth and life. But no man is possessor of all things except he be purified and clean, cleansed from all sin. Do you hear that? So there's one over against the other. You got to be purified and cleansed from all sin. And if you are purified and cleansed from all sin, you shall ask whatsoever you will in the name of Christ and it shall be done. But know this, it shall be given you what you shall ask. And as you are appointed to the head the spirit shall be subject unto you 